Hello and welcome to another episode of Linux Lads. This is episode 120 and I'm Connor. And I'm Amalith. And today we're joined by a special guest that is V Beauty uh, from Videoland, who contributes towards the Videoland project, which we will get into in more detail later on. But first, we have a couple of things that we just want to get through. Uh, one major big announcement for the first time in about five years, I think it is. Og Camp is back. Woo! Um, so it will be happening in the Manchester Convention Conference Centre. Not even Convention Centre. The Manchester Conference Centre uh, on the 12th and 13th of October uh, 2024. So um, I've very much enjoyed any time that I have been there. I have been twice, I believe, in two respective years. The whole COVID lockdown situation threw the organisers a speed wobble, essentially, and I, I think it's it's taken them this long to get, get back and uh, find their feet and uh, be able to organise it. But it's always great to see. So for people who are all completely unaware, Og Camp is what they describe as an unconference. It's very community orientated. There's a super... Uh, informal community feel when you're there and there are several tracks and the reason so you they do a a call for papers so you can submit your your papers beforehand in an usual conference way but the reason why they also call it an own conference um at least in previous years i don't know if they're doing it this year is they literally have spare tracks up on the board and in the morning if you put up a, a talk for a certain time slot you can turn up on the day and give that talk at that time slot so that is the unconference aspect to it but uh, it's a super friendly bunch of people if anyone who's ever hung out in the um, linux and open source community you can realize that people are very friendly very approachable people just meet up for lunch and kind of make social interactions and long-term friends from that and being in a, a conference that is in the UK, of course, everyone goes back, uh, back to the pub at the end of the evening and people probably have more than uh, their fair share of of drink. And that is also a very uh, a social lubricant, if you will. <laughs> so uh, I, I've definitely enjoyed myself any time that I've been on uh, at Og Camp. So it's great to see that it's back. So, Amalith, I believe you put this in the show notes. There's a backdoor in the uh, XZ, or XE, however you want to say it, uh, that leads to a SSH server compromise. I should say it can lead to an SSH server compromise under certain conditions. But mm. XE itself does have a backdoor in it at the moment, and Red Hat has put this CVE at a full 10 out of 10 severity. That's the, the maximum possible score. This is a critical issue. If you have systems that are affected, stop using them immediately, upgrade, downgrade, disable SSH, do something. Um, we're going to have links in the show notes to NIST's page about the CVE, a register article about it, and someone's blog post that lays out everything they know about the timeline of events and exactly what happened. Good to know. So, Vibuti. Can you give us a bit of your background and your involvement in, in the Videoland project? All right. So as a quick background, I started contributing back in my bachelor's to the VLC media player. So Google runs a program called Google Summer of Code. Not sure if many of people heard of it. It's formerly known as GSOC. So Videoland and many other organizations participates and wants students to contribute to different projects and they categorize into different projects within the VLC media player and video land dependencies as for the summer like 300 hours or 350 hours for a students to contribute over three months and I started contributing to video land VLC media player and my it was started in around 2018 so at that time the main project was to think about how to redesign macOS UI for VLC media player and basically the next release, which is the 4.0, which was planned since 2016 or 17, and it's still work in progress. So you can imagine how slow it generally is. So at that time in 2018, we were just having mock-up UIs and trying to put change buttons and do fair basic reorganization and clean up of the code in preparation for the new UI. So that was my main contribution back in the day. And then later I realized that 
UI is nice, even though it's more repetitive tasks, I should look into more technical aspects. So I looked into muxers, demuxers inside the video, VLC media player, which leads to baking and developing video encoders to encode videos. Uh, for instance, when we talk, this is real time encoded and sent through the internet. So that turns out that video, I realized that video compression is important and it can be more interesting so i started to look into that and i worked with a lot of video land related projects i was mostly doing works with zip organization xiph which makes this flag codec which we record to and ogg opus theora and many other open source royalty free codecs i was working with a different standardization which is now popular called av1 and mm -hmm. zip and video land leads it's like kind of joint effort where video land and zip people contribute together so I was working with the AV1 standard on making a Rust version of AV1 called Ravi. So a bunch of VDLAN people and Zip people joined the force to develop that codec in the Rust. It was funded by Mozilla back in the day. And then Mozilla randomly decided, okay, let's fire all the research people. And they fired to a 250 research people of 1000. Not sure if you remember the news back in early COVID days. So that slacked the whole research team for codex and mozilla now has zero people who is doing any codec development oh so <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I, I i think i remember hearing that on the time but it's yeah i mean they do they they need people to maintain but i'm talking about actual research and development part because they fired all of those people i, I remember mozilla being involved in the 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 av1 project but uh, yeah i did not know to the extent of that and it's also interesting to point out because uh, uh, i'm sure it's it can be uh annoying from your perspective but for people they're when they hear video land they may not have even heard video land but as soon as they hear vlc they're thinking oh yeah vlc i've heard of that yeah and for a lot of them video land just that is all they do they just do vlc i'm, I'm sure it it takes up a lot of what video land does but it's important to point out that uh, Videoland do a lot more than just develop VLC. Yeah, probably I could give a proper background, which I'd actually missed showing that. So, okay, so Videoland is like a non-profit organization registered in France. So it basically has a non-profit body built of like board of members, then bunch of association members, and then a lot of contributors in their free time. And Videoland projects has mainly VLC media player, which all people know. And then VLC Video Land people has developed a video codec called X264. So that's a very popular codec for any use internet use cases and also for pirating videos. <laughs> so it's pretty popular. Which which nobody ever ever does. I, yeah, I, I, know, I, I don't that. know if pirating is a real thing. I don't know, right? We we uh, never seen that. We only heard of it. I mean, it uh, it's only big book money as far as I can I can understand. <laughs> Nobody ever does that. Yeah, and then VLC has something called X265. And then there is a lot of things related to Blu-ray and libraries for doing the Blu-ray, broadcasting services, and also a lot of consulting. So VideoLine has a separate company for profit called Video Labs, where few people are employed to work full-time for VLC Media Player and few other projects as full-time employees. So that's a big picture of you. I've I've heard of some um, codecs that are quote unquote like successors to uh, H two six four. Um, I've heard of H two six five, and I've heard of HEVC. I do not know if those are two separate or are they interchangeable. Um, but it's there's a, there's a lot of confusion. Yes, yeah. To, it's I so it's like H two six four is the standard, and mm -hmm. it's the codec implementation which involves video codec means video encoders and decoders. So. Mm -hmm. One of the implementation of the encoder is X264. Mm. And X264 is the implementation of H264 standard. And H264 is also called as AVC. And in the, so it's basically like MPEG is one organization, Motion Pictures Engineers Group. And there is this standardization boldly of ISO, ITU, the actual normal standardization people, they have a different terminology. That's when they're called as H264, H265, things like that. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it's all mess. And that's, those all are royalty and patented codec where you need to pay per device for using in commercial use cases. And uh, HEVC is part of that as well? As yeah, so X264, then it comes H265. And both of their open source implementation is X264 and X265. And there is current one is H266. 
or it's called VVC. Okay. And that's all patented royalty free codecs in the top line. Mm-hmm. Then you have open source codecs in the bottom line. So till like 2015, it was like Ziff has made an open source codec called Theora, Dala, and many others. And then VideoLand also has a lot of expertise developing open source variants of X264, X265. And then there is Mozilla also. Mozilla and Ziff was Ziff people when they developed codec, it was funded by Mozilla. So it's like Mozilla. So Mozilla has this Dala codec, which is an open source codec for video compression, mm-hmm. which was competing to H264 at that, that time, which is royalty free. And then Google has this acquired this company long time back during the flash player days. It's called Onto Media. Okay. So they have a bunch of engineers called Chrome Media Team, which was developing something called VP8, VP9, VP6, like that. Yeah, I have seen those, and they can do that. Can do image uh, f- formats as well as, as yes, well. yeah, yeah it can do that. Yeah. So it was back in like early 20, 2010s where H two six five was getting standardized. And when YouTube wanted to use that, they had to pay like per stream when people used to play that. And when Google did some rough numbers back in the day, it was like really expensive. And they realized they should have their own royalty free codec. That's how VP9 was born, more or less. Mm -hmm. And then like Cisco had their own another version called Thor. So basically what happened back in 2015 is that all of these people joined together and made an open source forum called Alliance for Open Media. And AOM was formed. And all the people joined the forces and developed together having a common source code and code base and made an open source codex. And VideoLand was also one of the few frontiers doing these developments. So I was not involved at that time because I was in high school. Is 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 AV one the result of that yes. philosophy? Of, yes. Of, okay. Yeah, now all, I get you, yeah. all these companies joined together and made a royalty free open source codec and that became AV1. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's, and now what I do is that I mostly do development for next generation of AV1. So next generation after AV1, then you need the next standard. Mm-hmm. It it would be like AV2 in some world, but it's mm-hmm. not AV2 yet because we are still developing. And VideoLand involves in doing the server infrastructure for the a- whole AOM and also testing for these codecs and testing infrastructure and things like that. And my main contribution in this kind is... These kind of things, attending some standardization meeting, which is boring jobs. <laughs> but well, another thing is uh, tangentially related, but uh, it's all to do with codex. But VLC just has the reputation of even amongst non-technical people, people who who don't aren't necessarily of a Linux and pheno- uh, open source philosophy, or or even are aware of what Linux is. Is VLC will just play anything? Yeah, <laughs> and is it, it? Can you? maybe give some insight as to possibly why, what that is is it something that you guys have developed your, yourself or you, you just rely on uh, i presume it's it's probably ffmpeg and probably some other things that, that allows you to so to give a quick background how i have i'm again just giving a warning that i'm not a vlc expert of the whole player sure, sure, but yeah. i have a very vague idea of how it works so when you play in the video players is typically called as demuxing mm-hmm. and it's called demuxers and it's called decoders in some other world. Mm-hmm. So video land has what basic idea is that if you think, if you know FFmpeg, FFmpeg is the Swiss army of video codecs. So it allows you to convert and play anything with the video converting from one format to another. Mm-hmm. So what VLC do is that VLC has mostly the backbone of video playback is through the FFmpeg. So whatever codec is supported in FFmpeg, VLC inherently supports that. So FFmpeg has support for like 1000 or 2000. I don't know how many, what's the actual numbers, but easily 1000 plus files, 1000 different codecs. Mm -hmm. So starting from like random Game Boy video play emulator codecs Mm -hmm. to modern standard, which is not even a thing which people knows. So it has that kind of variant of codec support. My abiding example is way back in the day when we all had, like before smartphones, when we all had those uh, candy bar shaped Nokias and Sony Ericsons and everything like that. I think it actually was a Sony Ericsson. And if I recorded a video, it recorded it in like something like 3GP or yeah. some weird format. I remember that. Literally not, nothing on Windows would play it, like Windows Media Player or like, I was like, I have no idea what to do with this. And then VLC is like, double click. 
play. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> that used to blow people's mind when I when I showed them that. Yeah, so what happens is that VLC has like when during the playback it has like at least five different playback routine. So if one doesn't playback and it will have like suite of codecs, it will go to second set of which will have another set of codecs, then third set which will go to another set of codecs. So sometimes all this happens in a flip of second, right? So yeah. that's the amazing part. And most of the times you don't need to load the full video. You just need to read the header of the video and check if you can parse and read like first thousand bytes, something like that. If it works, you can play the video. And it's an amazing concept, which made by joint community effort. I do have some questions about the VLC, some of the VLC tech stack. What language is it in? Are there any frameworks in use? What kind of collaboration platform? That kind of stuff. Right, so VLC is mainly written in C and for window related thing, they have some extensions to C Sharp and for Mac OS and iOS, it's all written. Mac OS is fully in Objective-C and in iOS, it's slowly migrating to Shift language. I said Shift is the I new language, not new, like still relatively new of from Apple. So iOS is developed in Shift, S-W-I-F-T, right? So and then what else is there then vlc also has the main build system is made out of cmake and there has been efforts to migrate that to mesen mm -hmm. mesen is a different build framework which is slightly more human variant of cmake if i say that's what i've heard as well yes yeah so so more new projects of pdlan is fully based upon mesen and mm -hmm. old projects like vlc as vlc has like at least like thousand different dependencies and you need if you start to compile ho whole vlc by scratch it would be like at least 100 different dependencies which you had to build by source and then you had to compile all of that you need ninja technique to build that in one way so to rebuild that to see mesen it's complicated and all the developments still like pre-covid or Maybe till like 2018, I don't know, 2019 or 2020, it was all through mailing list. Mm -hmm. And at some point, it started to migrate to GitLab. And now VLC is fully based in GitLab, which is an okay. amazing feature. Is that GitLab.com or like a self-hosted? It's, it's a self-hosted server of okay. VDLAN. It's based in Paris. It's a physical server owned by us. And I think it's physically caged as far as I can tell. Okay physically caged and few people only has their actual keys. Mm -hmm. So it's very secure. Does VLC do anything for like FOSS supply chain security verification, that kind of stuff? I don't think so. There is like the FFMP community and VLC community and so if everything has an overlap because it's more or less many same people in many world, different, wearing different hats. Mm -hmm. So FFMP is the underlying infrastructure for the whole thing and the whole supply chain is designed by FFmpeg in terms of video right that makes sense so so it's some way yes some way it's not i don't know how we define supply chain because it's always confusing to me it's a very nebulous term yeah so if we see in that way like youtube youtube uses FFmpeg in the back end and chrome uses that to handle the media netflix uses that vimeo uses that anything uses that everyone uses that it's, it's if there's audio or video on the web, it's probably FFmpeg in the background. Yeah, and probably till like 2013, 2050, maybe like till like that, people were not open to public to say that they are using FFmpeg. It took some turn and time to people to say that they are using FFmpeg, which is a very interesting thing. Mm -hmm. It's a political stance, I think, from companies. Trade secrets and all that. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've definitely heard the. I mean, it's. It it definitely is a a shift. I think uh, roughly about ten years ago. I don't know about the the time period that you were referencing, but I felt that yeah, it was it was almost they're very skeptical of uh, large open source projects, and they almost deliberately would would go in the opposite direction. We're talking about the large organizations like your your Microsofts, your Amazons, your Googles, and everything like that. They're like, no, 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 we must develop it in house. We must do it in a proprietary way or whatever. Probably because upper management or something like that didn't quite grasp the concept and they're like no it's our intellectual property and you don't we we, we don't want any of that to be leaked out because our competitors might gain an insight into our inner workings or something like that so it's all intellectual property now in in the last 
10 years or five years or so, I've noticed a, a shift as, as you're mentioning. It's like, yeah, like it's so what if, 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 if anything, it benefits everyone. The fact that they're all contributing to something that's a standard and. Yeah. Just to add one more thing is that probably like, probably five or 10 years back, we, even if the company's people contributed, they never used their company emails. They used their personal emails when they send the patches, which is an interesting thing. Are there any cool features of VLC that most people might not know about? Anything kind of hidden within menus, not super easily accessible? It's one of the few things which people always love. I don't know if many people know it can play ASCII video in ASCII formats. I did not know that. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, so that was a very popular thing. But before you answered, I was going to say it can play Blu-rays, which not many people know that it can play with Blu-rays, but yeah. And now the new version of VLC has added the feature for when you scrub that, you can have a preview of the videos. Okay. And then the, this, the new whole thing in the... So if you use the nightly version of VLC, mm -hmm. you'll have cool new features. So one of the cool new features is something called Media Library. So it indexes all the audio and video files and creates a music library and video library kind of thing. And you can select and play the videos like that. It's super cool. Are there any other? That was actually my next question. Are there any other interesting features that people might look forward to in future releases? Right. So in the VDD video, which it will be available in the chat. So there was a demo of showing to play the Game Boy through VLC actually play the whole game simulated through VLC media player. How does that work? <laughs> Some engineer in the video, he would be showing us a lightning talk of three minutes where he was actually playing and figuring out the linking of that and playing the game. So it's super cool. Interesting. In the, and you, it will be like mapping different keys and functionalities to actual directions. It's very interesting. Okay. That would be a cool, interesting one. Yeah. I don't have the article linked to the show notes, but um, there was something that came up uh, recently, and I don't know if you'll be able to comment on it, but they were saying this as a potentially controversial thing that VLC might be about to implement or is on their, on their roadmap or something like that. you will be able to stream TV streams that I think contain ads within the TV streams. And I think their, the spin that they're putting on it is there will be some kind of revenue share thing going on, which I do not believe to be the case, but I, I'm, I'm not quite sure. I don't know if you know the background of that and would you be able to comment on it? Right. So I don't have a very clear picture because we also don't know what's the story. I also don't know I mean. So ideally, if you see as a big picture, the open source projects like Videoland, FMPEG is having a huge problem of sustainability. Mm -hmm. And we have been trying to make awareness to people that the tech and these things are very, very complex and a regular open source contributor can't be easily contributed because the learning curve is very steep and it's very, very hard problem to do any development in VLC or FFmpeg or anything in the video. And it's a very hard problem and the people are getting old. What I'm trying to say is that people need to live and most for that people are trying to figure out a ways to make this project sustainable and it's hard problem and that was one of the key idea of the video and developer days which happened in dublin it was sustainability was the goal of the conference and we were trying to talk to different people on different ways to resolve that i mean few companies support us and that can support few few people but on a long term run it's not easy mm -hmm. so we are trying to see what are the different ways by which we could generate revenue and uh, you i mean if you remember wikipedia has an aggressive ad campaigning of getting donations and recent numbers mm -hmm. is this is also in public of VLC is that we have close to 150 million users I think active users I'm talking wow. in VL, all the VLC media plan that's a lot yeah I think we are like almost close to Firefox in some way Firefox is like less than 200 I think and it's not trivial to have different because the code base for different Android is different iOS is different Mac OS is different, mm -hmm. it's different and all the engineers and pumping money to make them develop in full time is not easy because you can't have run a software as open source for 150 million people. We need developers working as full time to maintain that issue, fix the bug fixes and things like that. And for that, it costs us money. And right now, people do some random consulting in the free time, generate revenue and use that revenue and do the development. 
or sometimes people some companies do chip in some money and pay some developers yearly wage things like that so that's the current state of affairs so there is a huge problem of sustainability and we are looking on different ways on how to resolve it and one of the idea was maybe we could see we can put some ads and ads as in like the streams will be playing natively so this would be like an a separate network button which would be like searching for different network devices where you could ins- you, know, you know you could directly play youtube videos in vlc if you don't know so it would be something similar maybe i would assume so you could put a network stream url and play it and the ad which would be played would be shared or something like that but it's mm-hmm. still hypothetical scenarios which no one has any clue it's it's a it's a program that it's a problem that every open source project encounters is how do they monetize on based on an open source um base so speaking of that if people want to donate or get involved and write code for vlc or maybe if a company wants to get involved and like sponsor development how would they go about that they could just email. so in the video land page there's a whole page for support so you could say see that how you could support us and consulting and contacting the team and things like that and donations is also their whole page is there on how to support us um i was literally as you were speaking there uh, looked it up so that is videoland.org slash contribute if you want to contribute either financially by no- donating uh, materials or anything like that and there's support for um for maybe writing documentation or anything like that is also available on videoland.org slash support uh we will include all of these uh links in the show notes of course mm-hmm. so i think one of the easy way would be like contribute looking into gsoc program i would highly recommend so google summer of code so in like when i was doing it was only it was only open for students and now it's open to public and anyone could contribute the google summer of code is a program where google gives you money to develop for open source projects so to develop x feature of vlc which is listed as projects you could do that with the google money and to support vlc which is very easy and nice so google effectively pays you to contribute to open source yeah that's how i started whole development mm-hmm. with open source and that's an awesome program yeah so it's a very nice program and that's that program is also having a lot of sustainability problems and i think the lead pro person who was leading the whole gsoc program is no longer part of google or something like that okay it was a whole hacker news thingy last year mm-hmm. when he got axed from google i see i must have missed that yeah i think these companies says that they have money problems which is interesting to be honest I don't know how Google has money problems. <laughs> <laughs> they, they have money to burn. The amount of the amount of times that they've invested in projects and then killed the projects uh, after a while. Yeah, we did hear of from different companies which are like almost trillion dollars to say that oh we don't have money to contribute or support. Sure. <laughs> that happened last year, so it was interesting. I mean, in an ideal situation, unfortunately, not everyone every. large project such as uh, VL, uh video land or vlc is in this position but it, it, to that point of these corporations who put their money where their mouth is just look at blender like blender is like has so many gold and platinum and everything large donations they're fully supported which is great and I'm glad for for yeah. the blender project but there are such large um open source projects such as video land that should get the equal representation yeah maybe that's a good idea maybe we should have different donation tier platforms and ask company to pay that yeah that's a good idea i will put that in the next aso meeting <laughs> is there anything you want to say to the audience before we wrap it up and end the the podcast that that can be stuff about vlc your socials a personal website whatever you like okay so i don't use socials i only have maybe actually i do use linkedin but yeah because right now i am doing phd in academia in ireland so my main research is for improving video compression for streaming use cases and yeah so most of the time i work with video related research 
So to keep up with the latest community, we need to have some sort of professional network to publish and showcase our net papers and presentations and things like that. So that's one thing which I use. And my one more thing to add is that most of my research is focused with open media and open source codecs. And it even though it is in academia, I try somehow try to link to have some open source relation so that most of the academia, when they do video research, they would be doing on royalty free closed codex. And in our lab, we try to do open source, open codex based research, which is interesting. And it's also a harder problem because you don't have any documentation. So yeah, that's the most of the time I do as research here in my free time. Okay. We'll make sure we include links to everything in the show notes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I have like old website, which I didn't update in probably three or four years. <laughs> But yeah, yeah, if people have any other questions, they could email me or set me in IRC if anyone uses IRC. Yeah. Yeah, sounds good. Okay, I think this is a great place to wrap things up. Thank you again to Vibuti, who is our guest for today. It was a very interesting talk. Great to have you. Thanks for hosting me. All right. Uh, bye, guys. <laughs>